Let's do unit conversions. Here's the essential question. Write this at the top of your science notebook page. How do we convert between units of measurement? I'm going to start a little unconventionally by giving you a practice problem. I challenge you to pause this video right now and solve this problem, but don't just do it on a calculator or in your head. Write down on your notebook the process you took because that's important to unit conversions. Did you try it out yourself? I really challenge you to do so. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can solve this problem together. First, we probably need some important information. Namely, we know that one year is 365 days. There's one day and 24 hours, and one hour is equal to 60 minutes. This is important to help us solve our problem. This is how I would do it. First, I would take 60 minutes, because I know there are 60 minutes in one hour. And I know that there are 24 hours in a day, so if I multiply the two, I'm going to figure out how many minutes there are per day. Next, I'm going to take that answer, 1,440 minutes, and I'm going to times it by how many days there are in one year. And that's going to give me my answer, 525,600 minutes. Hmm, isn't that a song? Well, this is an example of unit conversions and what we're going to need to do. First, we need to know what a conversion factor is. A conversion factor is just a set equivalency that helps us convert from one unit of measurement to another. We saw them before. One year is equal to 365 days. That's an example of a conversion factor. On our periodic table, there's a bunch of chemistry-related conversion factors that we're going to need to be able to use. This is the conversion process and something you should take some time to write down and learn how to use appropriately. This conversion process is very simple and it's going to help you guide through each of the different conversion unit conversions. First, we have a starting measurement. This is what's given to us in the problem and unit A represents the unit that we're starting with. Eventually, we're going to convert it to an equivalent measurement in unit B. To do that, we just multiply it by a conversion factor. This is that important step we're going to need to know how to do and how to set up. Notice that it's a fraction set up in parentheses where unit A, the measurement we're converting from, is on the bottom, and unit B, the measurement we're converting to, is on the top. I have a really important science math warning, or at least a tip. Always write your units along with the measurement. We don't typically do that in just straight up math. In math, we just typically use numbers in our calculator, but it's going to be important as we're converting from one unit to another that we include our units when we're making our when we're doing our conversion math process. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here's our first example problem. If one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, how many centimeters are in 0.25 inches? You can pause this video right now and see if you can figure it out before I go through it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through it right now. First, I take a look at my problem and notice that it's given me a conversion factor. This is an important piece of information. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. We're going to need to use that in a moment. Next, this next number is our starting measurement. So we're going to go ahead and put that right here. 0.25 inches. We need to figure out how many centimeters that is. So we're going to use a conversion factor. Now this is our equivalency. This is our conversion factor. So we're going to need to set it up according to this rule up here. So I'm going to multiply it, but I'm going to put one inch on the bottom of the fraction and 2.54 centimeters on the top. The reason we put it in this format is because, according to math, our units will be able to cancel out. Inches being on the top over here and on the bottom in our conversion factor. So if I pay, take 0.25 inches and times it by this fraction, I'm going to get my equivalent measurement and my answer over here. 2.25 inches is equivalent to 0.64 centimeters. All right, let's do another example problem. This one says how many miles in nine times 10 to the six inches? And then it gives a few conversion factors. So right up here, nine times 10 to the six inches is our starting measurement. But take a look down here, we're given two conversion factors. There's nothing that's gonna take us directly from inches to miles, but we do know how to go from inches to feet and from feet to miles. 
So we may need to do multi-step conversions. We might have to do one conversion, use the answer, and then do another conversion. So let's start with what we have. 9 times 10 to the 6 inches. We can use one of these conversion factors to figure out how many feet there are. So let's do that. Let's take 12 inches and one foot and put it in a conversion factor like this, where one foot is on the top and 12 inches is on the bottom. The reason we do it this way is so we can cancel out our inches and we're left with feet. So 9 times 10 to the 6 inches multiplied by this fraction, 1 12th, is going to give me a different equivalent measurement in feet. Now this isn't our answer, but it leads us closer to our answer. Next we're going to take our previous conversion and we're going to use it in a new conversion. So 7 times 10 to the 5 feet multiplied by a new conversion factor where we're going to convert feet to miles looks something like this. Because we know one mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet, we're going to put feet on the bottom from this conversion factor so we can cancel out the feet and we're left in miles. If we were to plug this into our calculator, then our answer would be 142 miles. All right, I have one more problem for you. This one's a little bit more related to chemistry. This one asks, how many atoms are there in 3.2 moles of copper? Well, we're given our starting measurement, but we have a problem. We don't have any conversion factors. Ah, but we should remember that our periodic table has a bunch of conversion factors that are related to chemistry. So looking at that, there's specifically this area right here that talks about what a mole is and what it's related to. Notice that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. So we're going to use that as our conversion factor. So let's start with our starting measurement, 3.2 moles. Now we're going to multiply this by a conversion factor. We're going to put one mole on the bottom because that is the unit that we are trying to cancel out. And we're going to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd numbers of atoms on the top. This, by the way, is called Avogadro's number. If we go ahead and solve this problem in our calculator, 3.2 times and then this fraction right here, we're going to end up with our answer, 1.92 times 10 to the 24 atoms. That's it for unit conversions. Take a moment right now and review and highlight key terms. Ponder and ask questions. If you have any, write them down and seek answers to those questions. Finally, summarize the, the essential question. Good luck.